Would you mind if I shared my screen and we go through some of the preview pages? Sure. So this is the cover to Echo Lens number one. Yes. Uh, you got the, the credits right here, your first build, uh, and then it's Hayden, and then Dave, and then Pod Klein. Even the image logo is part of the design, which yeah. I think is really cool. Um, it is in landscape format. So my question there is, is it a regular comic book? twisted sideways or what are the dimensions of this uh the comic is the same size as a standard comic but the staples are on the left so the staples where the the word oh, echo starts right here the staples are there mm, okay and this is hope red hood can you yeah. would you mind describing what this weapon she's holding is I call it a fire lance, which is a term I kind of uh, was inspired by and stole from Michael Moorcock. <laughs> you know, there's a, a character one in uh, one of his stories uh, or series that uses a thing called a fire lance. And I just love the way that sounds. And this is a, a weapon she, she uh, steals in the first issue and keeps. And obviously the, the inspiration for this, um, you know, takes off of Little Red Riding Hood, but what about the rest of it? Like what, what, uh, what inspired you to put on uh, this one, this one long glove and not the, not put it on the other arm as well? Yeah, that's going to be a thing uh, that plays an important role later. So uh, not much I can really say about it that wouldn't be spoilery um, other than that. There's a reason she has it. Okay. Um, moving on to the next, we have the raw cut. Is this the villain? Yes. Whose name you're not mentioning yet. Um, I don't know if we should say what her name is yet. Uh, it's okay. She, she is the personal enforcer of the main villain. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. But her role, her role in... Um, her arc and how she relates to Hope will be significant as we go along. I think some places are calling this cover a variant cover, but it's not a variant cover, right? It's a raw cut. It's a different edition. Um, there is two, there's um, the regular version of the series has two covers. Mm -hmm. So there's a version of this cover in color. Oh, okay. And then this is the raw cut has the cover we just saw in a different layout and then okay this, and then th this version here this black and white version which is you know the black and white version of the variant cover got so, it yeah so issue one there's two covers uh the raw cut there's two covers is it challenging to draw a character with a full face mask on you can't show the expressions yeah, it is. Um, but at the same time, it can be, you can get weird expressions out of characters that have a, a rigid mask through changing angle and lighting. Mm -hmm. This was something I learned uh, on Batwoman. You know, granted with Batwoman, we could show her, her mouth making different expressions. But in terms of her eyes, uh, she she really was exp expressionless, but by changing the angle and the lighting, you would get a, a sense of her emotion uh, on her eyes, the way I would angle the mask. So with this character, it's kind of similar lighting and angles uh, to kind of ins get different uh, impressions. The, the number one thing is with her is sort of the creepiness because that permanent smile is there no matter what. Yeah, no matter what's happening to her, she could be in pain and she'd be, still be smiling. Correct. Uh, I also like that she's also wearing a hood. That's nice uh, imagery. Literally right there. an echo of the first cover. <laughs> yes, it's it's the first cover backwards. So this is one of the first um, uh, preview pages that were shown. I have to tell you, I read this and instantly realized I needed to read this more. Oh, cool. <laughs> I needed to read more <laughs> cool. of this. Right on. <laughs> uh, I like how the uh, the backstory that as listed isn't, you know, it's detailed enough so that I kind of know what's going on, but it's not so detailed that I still want to know everything. 
why right. that happened. Right. Um, and can you, what can you tell us about this page? Like, this is sort of family life, and uh, can you tell us who this is? I can't really say who that is, other than obviously she hates him. Yes. Um, who that is is going to play a big role involving the secret behind the Echo Lands. Um, so there's nothing I can really say that's about that without being spoilery. Um, the backstory elements here, what was fascinating about this page is when we wrote it, we didn't write it with, um, we didn't necessarily write it with those individual scenes that we show there. Oh, really? Yeah, originally it was going to be just the text and everything we see to the right of, of those thought bubble images. But uh, it, as I started working on it, I messaged Hayden and said, you know, told him, I'm like, you know, I think I want to put these images in here. Um, and here's how we could do it. Uh, instead of it just being standard panels, these are the thoughts, the images going along with the thoughts she has about where she came from. And the result was a, kind of this interesting thing I stumbled on because of it is doing these thought bubble images, usually thought bubbles when you see them in comics or especially old comics, they're always text, right? Yeah. So this ends up becoming a device we use a few times here and there where you, you get a peek inside what the character's envisioning. Um, so that was pretty fascinating. But the result is, is a better first page because it's got so much movement um, and allowed Dave to put these, you know, rich, cool colors against the hot colors. Also allowed us to kind of show this idealized um, style for her childhood, which I was inspired by old Disney cartoons, actually. Really? So, yeah. So as an example, when you look at Snow White, the original Snow White, how the characters are drawn versus the backgrounds. The characters are done in this line art. It's elegant line art, but then everything in the backgrounds is painted. And so I wanted to kind of capture that effect with these images of her past. I was gonna say, yeah, this is this is very clearly, uh, I, Snow White wasn't where my mind went to. It kind of, sure. my, it kind of went to, uh, it kind of went to Studio Ghibli, but I mean, oh, that's kind of, it's kind of, the same concept there yes yeah uh, that is interesting so you once again you're coming up with a different style for the flashbacks and it is a mix so it's, it's like in batwoman where kate kane is drawn one way and then batman is drawn another way yeah very interesting um for the next page i found this fascinating because there's a school of thought amongst some fans who are like why would you make a panel that's just where there's really nothing in it <laughs> but i thought this this looked so cool so this is if i so the staples here would be in the middle am i right correct okay um and so this is her running so what would be the the concept behind this page she's she's running and she's what leaving the past behind or something or uh okay so essentially she's leaving yes okay so the first page is the future. Uh, She's thinking about the past and kind of correlating the two about where she started and where she's going to be. And everything that comes after the first page is going to be events leading up to the future. We do this for each chapter. But what we wanted to do is have transition panels. So it didn't, so, the movement from what you see on the first page and then what happens on the second page as we jump into quote unquote present day of the echo land story we wanted we didn't want it to be completely jarring it needed to feel like it eases you into it so that first page you have all those hot colors and the red of her cloak uh, dominating the right side. And then as you turn to this page, that's all just yeah. the red anchoring, anchoring you as she now moves into her story. 
And um, if super technical question, how do you come up with a panel this shape? Like, <laughs> is there a reason for it or? Yes, it's the number one. <laughs> oh, right there. Okay. Yeah. I was looking here. <laughs> <laughs> right okay i understand so that. when you see issue two then you'll go oh right okay there's a number and you'll you'll find it when you come back to this issue <laughs> so one of the things that we decided early on i'll come back to this red bit too in a minute but one of the things uh uh we decided early on was to not have any chapter names mm -hmm. um because we knew that these were going to be very packed pages uh, and we didn't want anything to kind of crowd them in even further. Granted, we could put that on the inside front cover. I mean, this is an image book. We could do that if we want, but we decided not to do that uh, and just really break it down into the simple, simple as possible. And so one of the things we're doing is each issue, uh, the issue number plays a role in its, um, layout construction so you know this is chapter one so we used a one issue two we'll use it a number two but every time i do it i i do it in a different way so it becomes part of the design element um uh which i i don't know i i just thought that'd be kind of fun to do um uh and now back to the red here one of the things my favorite things about this page and i amazed at how effective it was is we're dealing with three different you know the, the these middle panels here we're dealing with three different images of hope as she's moving running away from us into the background but when you follow the line of the cape it's one cape yeah it's amazing and so it's one background and it's one cape yes even though we have three figures of her. And I, the reason why I did that was to reinforce the movement of, of the entire thing. Cause I, when I wrote, when Hayden and I wrote it, uh, that wasn't necessarily what, what I was gonna do. Um, that was a decision I made uh, you know, at the time of, of drawing it. And I thought it was a good idea to do it that way because I felt like trying to draw three different capes would have slowed the, the image down mm -hmm. and it would have taken away from that transition feeling of moving from what we just saw into where we're going to take you, if that makes sense. That That is absolutely cool. And also if you had drawn three different capes, she'd have to be smaller in each panel, wouldn't she? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, so this also gives you the feeling of um, moving further away from the reader. Yes, yeah. and it also acts as a directional device too. When you look at it, it's sort of like a big giant red arrow. <laughs> you have no no choice but to move from left to right. I I tried to find different ways to do that in various parts of the of the series. I think there's a lot of things that fans just kind of take for granted. Like for example, here you use a bleed, uh -huh. and I think a lot of fans will, you know, don't understand that it actually takes thought to decide to go with a bleed in this case, but in in this case, it is necessary. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. uh, especially you're... carrying over from that first page, because one of the things, since we're dealing with a landscape book, yeah. well, my number one thought about the layouts is flow, that left to right flow, and it reinforces pulling from what you just were in and carrying it through to here. So, you, like this continuation feeling, even though we're moving into a different time. I am sad I missed the number one, though. I was looking at this oh, panel. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I was like, that's an interesting looking panel. <laughs> I think the number two will be a lot more obvious. Oh, yeah, very obvious. <laughs> um, and then this okay, is the... There, there will be people go, why didn't he do that in the first issue? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he did. <laughs> so I thought this one was... So this is one of those things that I was, that I was saying was... If I just describe this to anyone, there's all sorts of ways this could go wrong, but yeah. I can read this page perfectly. And I think one oh, of the things that you do is you make sure that hope goes in one very specific straight direction. Yeah. She's a, this red arrow moving through the whole thing. And uh, 
no one else is red here. Well, very few people are red in this in this image. And if anyone yeah. is, like the sci-fi guy, uh, they're yeah. very far from they're very far from where she is. Yeah, very different color red too. So this is our very first um, very first taste of what Echo Lands really is. It's a mashup of different genres, different worlds. Uh, you have you know three black and white figures over here, and they're even drawn differently. Uh, how long does it take you to draw one of these? Uh, on which part? <laughs> <laughs> like, let's say this spread. Was this like oh, a this month? Spread, this spread probably took me seven days. Seven probably. days. Yeah. That's quicker probably. than I thought it would take. <laughs> <That's> a <lot. laughs> There's a lot of stuff on this page. Um, and it's, I like, also, it's like putting yeah. together, when doing something like this is like putting together a puzzle in a way. But the end result is cool. It looks like it almost has like a mural like quality to it. It it feels like a mural, and it is it is interesting that, uh, you know, she's walking through here. This is a whole other panel, but just like from a glance, it kind of looks like one of those continuous backgrounds too. Like if you're just glancing yes. really quickly, then you realize yes. it's not. You're continually shifting angles. I thought that was interesting. Now, um, does anyone on this page? uh make a return appearance later on uh yes very briefly okay they don't they don't they don't meet a very good end <laughs> well with that hint, you'll recognize, I hope him, it's, when, you'll I recognize hope. him when they show up you'll you'll be like oh that guy looks familiar <laughs> well with that hint i hope it's the giant hamburger who doesn't meet a very good end <laughs> May not be a very good end for the giant hamburger, but it's a, it's a very good end for us. So this is, uh, this looks like a really promising, really, really wonderful, fantastical set of pages, uh, and I can't wait to see Echo Lands. So, with that, is there anything else you'd like to say about this this particular spread? Um, I don't think so. Other than I, there's so many things going on here that I made like dumb mistakes where uh, uh, where like I would leave the detail off. So like her little bracelet that she's got on, I had to put put in separately because <laughs> I forgot to draw it on. <laughs> so when that, you know, when that happens, color. what do you do? Like, is it is it a thing where you're like, did I forget something? And then you just can't put your, you yeah. just can't figure out where, yeah. what it is. And I, kept, and I kept telling myself, I'll come back to it. I'll come back to it. I'll fix it. And then Dave ends up coloring it and it's with, with the error. And so I just had him send me the, the high res color file and I drew the bracelet uh, on a piece of paper, scanned it, colored it and popped it in myself. So do you still use model sheets or? No, that's probably part of my problem. <laughs> Cause I was going to say, did you do model sheets for all of these guys? Yeah, no. No, I, I probably should have, but I, I have really bad habits when it, that's concerned. And I just tend to go like, oh, well, I can't remember. What did I do over here? <laughs> and I'll go and look at the page. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I end up making little, little mistakes. Uh, as an example, like when you look at the cover, uh, the satchel she's got, she's got it slung over a different shoulder than what she has here. And I always have it like this than what I did on the cover. So like little things like that, I'm like, oh, I'm not matching. But again, it's just a satchel. But it's like one of those little weird continuity things that, you know. Well, I'll tell you, I found that one of um, one of the key audiences for my show is aspire, you know, artists who are trying to work their way up, aspiring artists and trying mm -hmm. to learn more from you guys. And I think it'll relieve them to know that you're human. 